Let me pop up my, all right. Hello everyone, and welcome to PAEA's January webinar. Tonight, PAEA past president, Robin Brewer, Brewer excuse me, will talk about how her art department is creating authentic art experiences for students taking part in online and blended art classes. Registered participants will receive a Google form link via email in a day or two to fill out for their one hour of Act 48 credit. This webinar will be recorded and available at a later date on the PAEA website. Before we begin the webinar, we are asking participants to mute their microphones and keep their video off. Those controls are located in the bottom left corner of the controls bar. We are also asking everyone to sign in on the chat roll. Please use the same name in which you registered for this event. The chat roll can be found along the bottom in the controls bar as well. Signing in will ensure that you receive the Act 48 link. Let's get this webinar rolling. Robin, take it away. Okay. Well, let's see, let me share and da, 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 start up the PowerPoint. Let's see. Cool. All right. Good. Everybody see that? Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. Hi, I'm um, Robin Brewer. I teach at Garnet Valley High School, mostly media arts such as film and animation, photography, uh, but I also teach our ninth grade art and design course and some other courses as needed. Um, and I also teach at the University of the Arts in the art education department. So, um, but what I'm gonna do is talk about blended and online learning and how that is affecting our art programs and how we can uh, work with administrators in order to provide um, a good art learning experience uh, within the parameters that they've, they've given us. So you can see the purpose of this session is to address a growing concern over how to address blended and online learning with project-based and hands-on art programs. <clears throat> So a little bit of history here is that, excuse me, I'm gonna move this over, okay. Is that um, during the 17, 18 school year, so not too long ago, um, Garden Valley School District announced that within five years, we would offer all high school courses in three formats, face-to-face, -face, blended, and e-school. And um, in the art department, we knew that that was not going to happen. <laughs> we <laughs> said, um, what about ceramics? You know, are you going to offer that as an e-school class, you know? And so we tried to get them to change the wording of what they were telling everybody to say most high school courses or whatever. Um, they never did. They never backed down on that. However, um, here we are in 2020 and they have back down already, but they're just not saying it. So they haven't, they're not offering all high high school courses in three formats, but they are striving to provide most of them in these formats. Um, if we didn't play along at all and didn't agree to offer these things, they would just go around us and hire someone else to teach those classes. And since they're offering um, extra contracts, such as, um, you know, so I get extra pay to offer an e-school class, um, it would be foolish of me to not be the one to offer it because then they're gonna find someone else to teach that class. And it's gonna reflect poorly on our program if it's not a good class. So it's in our best interest as art teachers that when something this, like this comes down the line to find a way to work with them and then also to make it work for us. So that's something that was really important um, in our department. We have four uh, art teachers in our department. We all teach kind of specialty areas. So we all do different things. So you'll see a little bit here in just a minute. Um, the district also openly admits that this is an effort to retain the students um, and discourage them from attending a cyber school outside of the district. So they looked at their, um, you know, budget and how money is coming in and out of the district and realizing that they're losing a lot of money to students who go to cyber school um, and um, choose to do that for various reasons. And so that money gets taken away from our district. And they thought if we can have our own e-school, uh, we can keep that money. And it has been working. And that's how they, they pay us. They have all this money coming back into the district because now students are choosing the Garden Valley e-school because it's, it appears more prestigious because they get a Garden Valley uh, diploma 
versus a diploma from a cyber charter school or a cyber school. So um, it's very competitive in that sense. And the district is being successful in keeping students and student money in the district. Um, and then the important part is that our um, education association has a contract, um, it has contract language that um, that courses are to be taught by Garnet Valley teachers. So if, if um, I, were, I, I were to decide to not teach e-school courses, they would offer it to other Garnet Valley teachers before they go outside of the district to hire somebody. And then when they hire that person, they become a Garnet Valley teacher. So um, that's part of the selling point is that they're not sourcing it out of the district to, to offer those classes. <clears throat> so that was pretty extensive there. Um, let's see, that is not advancing. I don't know why that's not advancing. It's just making a cute little noise. Da, 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 da. Hold on one sec. Jill, are you there? Yes. Oh, okay. Is this, is this a common problem? Like it's not um, advancing? No, it's not right. something I've seen before. I can't even escape out of the presentation. Oh, there it went. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it just was. I don't know. It was just being slow, maybe. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that, everybody. Um, and some of this isn't quite loaded. So let's see, face-to-face. -face. These are the three definitions of what I spoke of briefly. Well, a little more extensively, but face-to-face -face is what we traditionally think of is our, you know, brick and mortar school environment where we have classes with kids and we see them every day. Um, our blended format, in our district means that they're usually in the building. They have, the teacher sets the schedule. So we have a six day cycle. The teacher could say on A days, we meet in person, always be here on A days. Um, you'll have B days off. And on those B days, you can go wherever. I'll get into that more later. And they can set a schedule and say, some days we're gonna meet face to face. Some days you'll be working independently and give them uh, work to do when they're not in class. Um, online eSchool is students who are generally not in the school building at all, ever. I have eSchool students I've never met. I might never meet them. Um, and, you know, they just, they don't come to school for various reasons. A lot of my students are ice skaters, competitive ice skaters. And so they're always traveling or they're doing other things. Um, so that's one reason. Sometimes it's a medical reason that a student doesn't come to school or even like a mental health reason that they don't come to school. Um, so there's lots of reasons why st students would choose e-school. And so I want to do a quick survey. And if you can just in the chat area, um, if you can just kind of answer loosely, if you can say maybe what what your status is right now, if you're teaching or and um, if you have any of these types of things going on, like does your school district offer these types of classes, blended or e-school? Does your school district um, offer courses in alternative other alternative formats, or has your district been talking about it or uh, looking at offering these types of courses? So I'm just going to give you one minute because I need to take a drink of water anyway. And um, uh, where is the chat go? Participants it's down there maybe no. Bottom, bottom bar, hover down. I'm looking. Uh, I think oh, there it is. So. I don't know if you can see, I guess if you're in the chat, you can see I've got uh, one person who's higher ed and they have um, also have classes that have similar options. Let's see if I hear everybody else. All right, so we've got someone who just graduated and they're looking for a full-time job. All right. It's still good to know, even if you're, you're not working yet and you're looking, um, this is something that you could at least have an awareness of. If they bring it up, you might sound really knowledgeable just throwing in a couple points that you get uh, from this presentation tonight. So it's always good to be prepared for things like that. 
And we have another school offers some online courses through Bearcat Cyber Academy online programs, but not our teachers, right? So some looks like some sort of partnership going on there with another uh, academy. On that note, um, Garnet Valley is also kind of doing something similar where they're offering other districts to, I, I, they can't sell it. There's something going on where they are looking at partnerships with other districts as well. Um, so we'll see if that's about it. Let's go, let's see, everybody. So let's see if we can go forward here. So let's fast forward and let's just look real quick at what I'm what we currently offer at um, Garnet Valley. And um, so we have 15 face to face art courses. That's what we've generally always offered. They change a little bit here and there, but uh, it's been that way for a long time. We have two blended courses and we have five e school courses that we offer. So you can see we only have five e-school courses. We don't have 15 e-school courses and we will never have 15 e-school courses. Uh, it's too many for kids to choose from anyway. So, um, all right, so you, here's a listing of the types of courses we offer. So our face-to-face -face courses are listed there, our blended courses. So art and design and sculpture in 3D are our blended courses. Um, <clears throat> we still haven't run those courses because we haven't had enough students sign up to take those. Um, so they haven't run, you could say. An e-school course only needs one student, but a blended course still needs to fill the seats of a regular class. So art and design would need, you know, 15, 20, 25 kids for the district to say it's viable to run that course. Um, and we have not had enough kids sign up. And this was the first year that we offered those. So um, those did not run this year. Maybe next year, as kids are learning how the blended courses are working, um, they might choose to do that. So in art and design blended course, um, there's a unit where it's a group project, pop art, sculpt large sculptures. And the teacher would then say, you know, for the next two weeks, you're going to be here every day because we're going to be working on this together. But then there might be some assignments where there's you know, certain sketchbook assignments or other things. And they might say, next class, you can work uh, wherever. Um, they, I think they just need to check in somewhere online or something like that. And, um, and then they don't have to come to class. They're usually in the building though. And I'll show you some pictures of that in a minute. Um, and then eSchool, you can see we offer our art and design class. That's our overall, just a little bit of everything class. Sculpture, art history, digital photography and digital media and graphic design. Put a little asterisk there because that one um, hasn't run yet. Um, it's still being written, but it's it's technically it's offered and the teacher's like, as soon as the kid signs up, I'll finish writing it. So, um, so that's kind of where that class is right now. Um, but we do have students in art history and in digital photography and art and design. So right now three courses have students in them. I have seven students in digital photography this year, and um, that's a great number. That's a really good number to work with. And um, so let me go on here. I'm gonna talk about blended for just a few minutes. Um, so students, as I said, they meet as a class. Um, they would meet in the art room if it's an art, you know, an art class, but maybe the first day of a six day cycle, the teacher lays out what the week's gonna look like or the six day cycle's gonna look like, give them um, assignments to work on. And um, you know, that meeting time is used for things that you would do face to face with kids. So group critiques, you could do it flipped and have the demos and instruction. Um, that's something that they do while they're not in class. Um, but some teachers, especially in art, like to have the demos in person because sometimes it's a little bit better the, you know, to, to be present for that. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's up to the teacher how that's going to look. Or maybe they need to distribute materials if they're going to be, you know, working on a, a sh um, something with value. They need to have certain drawing pencils. You can make sure all the kids have a little kit of all the supplies that they need so that they can work on that while they're not with you. Um, in 
uh, in a blended class on those days that students aren't with you, you generally just have an open classroom and you're there and students can come and they can choose to work in your room or they can choose to work elsewhere. So you're there as a resource for students who need it. Um, and the last point just talks about how they, um, they complete their work, uh, students complete work during the regular class time, they can work at home, they can work in somewhere else in the building, they can come in the art room during what we call lunch and learn, which is kind of like a study hall, but it's around lunchtime, it blocks up with lunch, and then, or study halls, things like that. So um, this slide has some pictures of learning spaces. What they've done over the last couple years at our high school is anywhere we're in our building where they could put furniture, they have done that. So it's everywhere. I don't know if it's up to fire code, if, <laughs> but there's, you can see here, um, the library was just redone with lots of little um, different types of workspaces. The top right photograph is a hallway that's kind of near the art rooms. And so they just put these little um, high top tables all down that wall. Um, you can see another um, picture at the bottom where there's some little couches and tables where uh, people are sitting and working. And I have to honestly say that usually, and I right now I have a, a hall duty, so I walk around the halls a lot. Usually the students, I, I'm personally shocked, but usually the students are, are working really well and they're working together. And, um, but sometimes not, sometimes they're watching Netflix, I will be honest. Um, but uh, a lot of times they are actually working and getting work done. So um, this is kind of what our school looks like now. It's very different than it was five years ago because you, you know, the, the halls aren't empty during class time. There's a lot of kids working all over the buildings, not just in the classrooms. <clears throat> So I've got my pros and cons for that blended model, which you could probably guess, but um, the pros are students learn to prioritize their time by setting their own schedule. And that's something I have personal experience with as a student as well, because the high school I attended, um, which was in St. Louis, Missouri, was um, a uh, mastery program. So we had, uh, we only would meet, it was kind of a blended situation. They didn't call it blended at the time, but we would only have math class once or twice a week. And then the other days when class didn't, when math didn't fill that schedule, the teacher would have an open room and you could go in and get help with math or you could just hang out in the art room all the time like I did. Um, and it was up to you to use your time well. And you had like a packet of work. When you finished your packet, you would go and get a ticket and then you would go to the testing center and take your test. And if you failed your test, you would have to do more work and then retake that test until you passed it. So um, anyway, it, it's, this type of program is gonna teach kids to prioritize their time. It'll get them ready for that college um, type of work ethic. Um, students may get more one-on-one -on -one instruction when they show up to class on optional days. So if I have a class that's blended, if I were to in the future offer photography, students could um, come in on those optional days and maybe there's only one or two students in there. It's easy for me to spend a lot of quality time with those two students um, if there's not a bunch of other stuff going on and people goofing off in there and you know playing whack-a-mole with kids. So um, there is that. And then face-to-face -face time is maximized to allow for demonstrations, experimentation, critiques, and, and um, so, you know, you, you would generally make the most of that face-to-face -face time together. Some cons would be less peer interaction while they're, while they're working. So if they choose to do a lot of their work at home instead of, you know, in the halls or in the library or in your room, they're working more by themselves and not interacting with their peers as much. Um, so some students may not be mature enough to work independently. I know that when I was in high school, my freshman year, I did very poorly because it took me a while to uh, be mature enough to make the right choices. And, um, but then by my junior year, I had it down and um, college was not such a shock for me. Um, and then some media is just better in the art room. So 
<clears throat> excuse me. So ceramics, again, not a great um, class for something like blended because kids are gonna have to be in that room anyway. So, you know, they can't do it in the library. They can't do it at home. They're gonna need to be in the ceramics room to do it. So it really doesn't make sense to do that if the kids have to be in your room anyway. So, all right, take a break here mentally. I'll give you guys a second while I take a drink of water. I'm gonna be talking about e-school next versus blended, okay? Okay, um, so e-school, um, like I said, for we have art and design, sculpture, art history, digital photography, and that digital mini, mini, media course. So remember, this is where students complete all the work at home, independently, or on the road, wherever they're at, they're doing this all online. Uh, coursework is heavy with video presentations and demos, and students can make appointments with teachers. I do have some students come in to school during um, any like a break time that I have or such, since I'm being paid a separate contract for those students, um, I can have them come in during my prep time and use some of that time. It's fine with the district that I do that. So if a student's really stuck with a concept or something and they have the flexibility to come in, they can certainly come in and, and meet with me. So some pros and cons for the e-school model. Um, it's for, for pros, like I said, it's an option for students who cannot attend school for medical reasons or sports. It's a flexible timeline. So some kids uh, work really well late at night. Some kids like to work on one subject for like a week. They'll just work on photography. I have one student who worked on it and he finished it all a year long course. He finished it before Christmas. So um, he wanted to get it done and um, he could work fast. He'll finish early and <clears throat> and that works for him. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, students can work at their own pace. I just said that. Students can work ahead. I just said that as well. Some cons. Um, there could be cheating. Who does the work? Can I prove that this student took these photographs? Um, you know, and things like that. So, um, you know, might talk about that a little bit more, but if you get them to um, use, uh, I'll talk about the choice-based model in a minute here. So that will help to prevent those types of things, at least in art. So I don't need to worry about cheating in math online because that's not my problem, but I can worry about how do I know in art that they are making that work. Um, again, con, no peer interaction. We know that art is really, um, really good to be working with others, bouncing ideas off of peers and things. And so that's, uh, you know, it's not ideal, but it were, again, it may be the best choice for some students. Um, again, students may not be mature enough to work on their own time and they fall behind or they don't finish a course that has happened. Um, it's more difficult to form a teacher student relationship when you don't see them. It's um, a little more difficult. And again, I'll show you some things in just a few minutes. So it's going to get a little more interesting here, I promise. And um, and then also student work and craftsmanship is it says often below standard expectations. And again, that's maybe because they're not working with peers. They, you know, you can tell them what you want, but they're not seeing that expectation the way they would if they're in the classroom. So, um, or they're just trying to hurry and get things done. So we've, we've noticed that the craftsmanship is not as, not really as high as we usually expect it to be. All right, so um, just some of the classroom formats that you might see uh, uh, teachers using is, of course, Google Classroom. Uh, Schoology is what we use, so I use Schoology for that. I use Google Classroom with an online course that I teach at University of the Arts. And then I've also used Moodle at another school. So um, there's also Canvas, Blackboard, there's, there's others. But these are the ones, these are the three I'm, I'm most familiar with. Okay, so how do we keep a studio course hands-on and relevant in a digital format? So some, some tips that I would give here is, first of all, develop a student-teacher relationship that encourages dialogue and feedback. Ask students to create work that's related to their interests and initiate dialogue around the work. 
that's something you would do face to face. And so then you would still want to keep doing that when you have students that you don't see face to face. So keep keep trying to do those same types of things. You're just doing it maybe through typing or maybe sending a short video to somebody, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, be available for one on one appointments. I offer it all the time. If students, you know, get stuck, I'm like, don't forget, you can come in and see me or give me a call. You can call my classroom anytime. Um, or I give them certain times that they could call or, you know, I don't have them text, but they can email me. So most students um, for eSchool are usually emailing me if they have questions, but I like to give them lots of different options to um, ask for help. And the, the important one that I want to talk about is a hybrid choice type of format that develops um, a, pr a certain practice. And this is going to help, I think, with um, keeping students honest, keeping students doing their own work, not having their brother do it or their mom. <laughs> but um, so having things such as uh, learning and research, um, experimenting, planning, proposing, creating, and reflection. So if you have them propose what they're going to work on or, you know, uh, and then, you know, have them show more of the processes and experimenting, have them documenting their work as they work. There's um, a lot of different ways where you can use these types of practices to um, get them to take ownership of the work. If they're reflecting on it, hopefully that's because they made it. So, um, okay. Let's go here. So here are some apps and tools that I use. And one of my favorites is called Loom, which tonight we're on Zoom, but Loom is a little bit different. And um, I'm gonna click out for just a minute, hopefully. We'll see if it'll let me do it. And I'm really taking a risk here. I'm gonna minimize that and I'm gonna go here. And this is a Loom that I have set up for uh, a different course that I teach uh, at University of the Arts. And you can see, I'm gonna press play here for just a sec. A Loom account and recording a short presentation using um, Loom and talking about the ISTE standards for students. Okay, so um, there I am. I, this is kind of meta here. I'm, I'm doing a presentation of me doing a presentation. And um, so Loom is basically what I'm doing here, but you record it ahead of time. So instead of us all sitting here in real time, like as we are right now, I would just record all this stuff I'm doing and then save it and then you get a link and then anybody who goes to the link can watch the video. They can send little reactions if they thought it was funny or they loved it or whatever. So um, they can also speed it up and you can sound like a chipmunk. Um, you know, save time, just play it really fast. That's fine, that doesn't bother me. <laughs> but anyway, um, so this is one way to get information to people where you can explain something really well while you're looking at photos or, or images or examples and they can see you in the corner so it's a little more personal um, so I really like this um, this app right here okay let me go back here and so you can see here I included a little link and it takes you to that so let's just go on to the next one Flipgrid is one I haven't used a lot yet I think I would use this a lot if I had a blended course but now that I um, have seven students in photography I think next year I'm going to definitely include a few um, a few assignments where they use Flipgrid and Flipgrid is uh, where they just record a response and I could have all of my eSchool students or all of my blended students answer a question I could ask them a question about you know, do they think that every photograph tells the truth? And then they have to maybe answer that question. And so they just do a cute little selfie type video. Um, they're always really short and you can see it's supposed to be really fun and kind of, kind of social media looking. And kids actually do really in, react well to this type of format. And um, it may sound kind of silly or whatever, but, um, 
kids get into it and then they can, you know, put their own little personal spin on it. But I think that this would also be um, for my online course, a great way to connect all these kids who are taking a singular course by themselves because they're not, it's not like a college online course where you interact with the rest of your classmates. Our eSchool program is not like that. It's like very independent study. This is your course. You do it at your own pace. You don't have classmates. You're just doing it. Whereas here, if, the, if I have kids responding to that, they can see how the other students have responded and watch those other videos as well. So it might just be a, a little more personal and um, interesting for, for students. I also love Padlet. So if you haven't used Padlet, um, and all of these are free, at least to, to some extent, you know, if you use it really extensively, you might have to end up paying, but I use, the way I use them, they're all free. <clears throat> but Padlet's just like a little board and people, kids can just post right to it. You just give them a link. So this was for my art and design class and elements and principles. This is on day one, first day they walk in the room. I like to get them out of their seats. So I talk to them for a few minutes. We talk about elements and principles real quick. And I'm like, all right, get your, get your phones out, walk around. I'd let them walk down the hall just a little bit and walk around the art room and such. And I have them shoot pictures, examples of different elements and principles. And then they have to upload them onto here. And then I can scroll through the page and you can see the kids put their names on there and you can see who uploaded what pictures and then we can talk about them. So um, <clears throat> it's, you know, in a format that they love and they're familiar with their phones and they're using them in an artful way, in an academic way. <clears throat> but um, Padlet, it's really fun. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, all right, drink a little water here. We're actually getting, I'm going really fast. So hopefully um, uh, you have a couple questions at the end. I didn't go too fast. <clears throat> so anyway, um, virtual art museums uh, are a good opportunity to, if you have an online course and you want students to, um, do something with, you know, art and um, maybe being a little more interactive. You, you, they can, you know, go into like an online um, virtual museum, walk around. You could tell them, go through the Egypt exhibit, like it shows you right here, and choose one artwork and explain, you know, some specific thing about, you know, why, what's the background of that piece or whatever. And so they can, maneuver, navigate, and go around and look there. Okay. <clears throat> see if there's, looks like there's a couple things on the chat here, maybe new. Let me see. <clears throat> now just some little notes. Someone said, love these apps, very engaging. I do. Those apps are so fun. Anyway, there's a lot of really cool opportunities out there. All right, I'm gonna go out again into the internet off of my slideshow. And um, WebQuest is an old term. I've, that word has been around for a long time, um, since I was in grad school like 10 years ago, and, uh, or even before that. But, um, you know, if, you've, if you're not too familiar, maybe that word is so old you don't, you've never heard it before, but a, webca a WebQuest is using the internet, using the website, and creating a, a series of tasks for students. So this one says, go to this website. Um, I don't know why the link's not there, but I'm gonna take you right there in a second. And then it says, um, read the content of the page, then click on play, and, um, and then answer the questions below. And then it says, then do the challenge, and, um, and then give me a screenshot to show me the results of your challenge. So if I go out here, <clears throat> And here it is. I love this. And of course, it's very specific to photography, but um, I use this in my regular class. I use it in my online class. But you can see at the top here, there's a learn tab, a play tab, and a challenge. So this first uh, page shows you about aperture and it shows you about shutter speed. And this is just like textbook. It's just telling you facts and showing you examples. There's nothing interactive on this page besides looking at pictures 
and getting some of the content. Okay, so when you go to the second tab, you can say play. And by play, they mean play around, try it out. So now it's interactive. And it says here, look, I've got my meter, I've got my aperture and all that. So I want to maybe change, let's say I want to have a shallow depth of field. I can put my aperture down here at 2.8 but you can see my meter move, my exposure meter now in three um, uh, clicks over. Um, so I need to change my shutter speed. There we go. So now I'm at a good exposure. I could also change my ISO, whatever it's gonna take. And then I can take my picture. It makes a really cool camera sound. And then it shows you what that picture would look like if you were using an actual camera. So kids can get on here and play around with the settings. And so you can see that, you know, the foreground is out of focus, the background's out of focus. And this is pretty sharp, um, the propeller and, and such. It's a neat little, little thing. So kids can play around on this for a while. And then the last step, of the web quest is to do the challenge. And so uh, click on challenge and then you can start a little challenge and it's like a test. So it tells you to first of all, get a good exposure. And then, so I would just, you know, make sure that I get a good exposure. All I have to do is get that to meet in the center and then take the picture and it gives me a check mark and then it says here's number two, do this. I'm not going to do the whole test, but it's a great little, little, little find for my class. And there's a lot of things like this out there. You just have to find them and um, that gets things a little more interactive for those students. Don't judge my desktop. It's full. <laughs> okay. Um, almost done there. We have, um, Two more slides. So one of the final things that I think is really important is that with my eSchool class, I have them create an online portfolio and that's how they turn in every uh, assignment that would be like maybe um, like a, not um, that web quest they wouldn't turn on, on here, turn in on here, but anything that's like artwork or something that they, they made uh, creatively. So I like Google Sites because it's the easiest. Kids, it's really intuitive. Kids can do them very easily. And so this is um, a student who has finished the course for the most part. I think there's one more thing he had to do. And so um, you can see up at the tabs up here, there's, you know, the home. They have to do an about page, tell it about themselves. This one is about composition. They had to do nine, the nine rules of composition and show examples their scavenger hunt, they have a staging assignment, miniatures, design, digital design, which is all of their Photoshop type of projects, and um, their experimental unit. So for each new assignment that they have to turn in, they just make a tab, they upload their photos to it, and that's where I grade it from. And then at the end, they have a, a basically a website showing all of the work that they did for my course. So this is another thing that keeps them um, kind of responsible for all of their work. So um, I can go out here in a minute and show you just basically my, my eSchool course um, because we have plenty of time. And, uh, but I just wanna say in conclusion before we go out there, is it perfect? No, I mean, it's, it's not perfect. Uh, what's perfect, having perfect students in my perfect room with perfect materials and everything's perfect. But um, are we working within the parameters and the directives of our administration? Yes. Um, we could dig in our heels and say, no, change is bad, uh, because sometimes it's not fun. But, um, you know, it's a need that is out there. <laughs> and um, if we can accommodate that, and we can make our administrators happy and our students are happy and we're happy. So it, it's become something that even though we were like dreading it, um, I've found myself really enjoying this process and having um, this variety of students coming in and out of, of 
this whole educational experience. Um, are our students meeting our objectives and growing as artists? It depends. I mean, it's like any other student. Um, are they putting in not just the time, but are they putting their actual, you know, are they self motivated? Do they, are they doing it as best they can because they are enjoying it and because they're interested? Or are they just trying to check another box off, which a lot of eSchool students are. But I can also say the same for my face to face students. There are some students that um, are diff more, more difficult to get to motivation wise, and they're just trying to get through the day. Um, so, you know, we're doing our best. We're doing our best for students who come in the building. We're doing our best for students who can't get into the building um, for whatever reason. So if, if you have questions as I'm going forward here, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go out to the actual eSchool course and show you what that looks like. Um, but feel free to add any questions to the chat. And then when I'm done showing that, I'll check and see if there's any questions in there. Let's see. Um, where am I here? Okay, so here's Schoology. You can see it says Garnet Valley up in the left corner. And this is just my template course. So when I get a new student, I copy this course into their course and um, and then I have to add due dates. If, if I don't add due dates to things, they tend to not do them. So, <laughs> so we've learned that, um, you know, if you give them a due date, it populates a calendar, the kids follow the calendar, and then they tend to turn in more work on time. So um, even though it's work at your own pace, adding due dates kind of keeps them um, in, in, um, I can't think of the word, we'll move on. <laughs> so, all right, so you can see here, there's a start here folder, and I have a little biography in there, and the students will also go in there and do like a quick introdu introduction, uh, introduce themselves and such. So let's see, over here, this is where you can see they're gonna build um, their portfolio. A lot of these modules just have one activity in them because, um, a lot of things might take more than an hour. They might take a day or two or even a week to do. So in math, they might have multiple activities in each module, but in art, um, they, it took a while for our um, administration to understand that I don't always have to have a ton of activities in each module because they're a little more um, intensive. So under camera functions, you can see the camera simulator. That's that piece that I just showed you a few minutes ago. So that's that activity and good photography. So I have in composition here, um, well, I have them critique a photo and then composition. There's also a really great little video. So there's a link to a video. They watch the video. They um, then shoot at least nine digital images, one for each of the composition techniques in there. And this is all on Steve McCurry, who is um, the photographer of this very famous Afghan girl photo photograph. Um, and then they upload that to their website. Uh, I'm gonna go back out here and go back out. Okay, so that would be integrity. That's our first unit, just learning a lot of the basics, which is composition, exposure, and um, and then getting their website started. So I'm not gonna do every single thing, but we've got seeing and publishing. So we've got a scavenger hunt where they are still working on composition and they're also working on their, on their digital um, basics using a digital camera. So a lot of kids will use a digital, digital SLR. Sometimes they'll just use their phone. It's whatever they've got and then, um, and then again, update their website. This unit is um, working with Photoshop um, or um, if they do not have Photoshop, right now our district is not giving students Photoshop. They don't have that set up. So they use something like Pixlr and, and I, have, um, I have a demo that is recorded, screencasted um, for them for that. There's a little midterm quiz kind of seeing how much they um, how much comprehension they have from those first three units 
And then um, they've got some more, um, they have a research project here, research an artist, look at contemporary photographers, shoot photos using the staging technique. And then there's an experimental unit and there's some things they work on in there. And then for their final exam, they, pro they, they propose uh, what they're gonna do and then they do it. And then in resources, generally that's where they're gonna find some, some uh, tutorials and some videos. This actually is not my up-to-date template. <laughs> There's a lot more um, videos in my most up-to-date template for this course. So you can see this is what a course is gonna look like. This was written as a half credit course. And that's why I said it doesn't have everything in it because I have a full credit course now. They, they decided they wanted to, me to offer this as a full credit course which is great, it's a, there's more money in that contract, <laughs> but, um, but I had to add some more, you know, assignments and, and such to it. So um, it's a little bit beefier than this for the full, full year course. All right, so that's most of what I got. So I'm gonna check the chat here. And we've got, I've got one question here. How do you handle entering grades in the school system when a student finishes so early? Does your system allow you to grade ahead of a marking period or do you just hold grades and enter them when the next period opens? That's a good question. So, and then there's another one I'll answer in a minute. So our grading for this is a little bit different. Um, we just have to enter a quarter, a quarterly grade and we enter whatever grade they have up until that point. And so when I get to the first quarter, I have whatever assignments they have turned in, I look at that grade, what their grade is, and that's what I enter in. And then at midterm, whatever they work they have done up until that point, that's the grade. And that sounds problematic because what if they only have two assignments done? And it looks like they have a 95, but they're still on unit one at midterm. The, there's a there's another thing in place that that kind of catches that and we have um, every two weeks we fill in it's it's really just a Google form for each eSchool student we just type in their name we say um, what their current grade is and then we say um, we just have to check a box are they gonna are, are they on um, on pace or do we think that they are going to struggle with getting the course completed on time or something like that. So there's some choices there and it takes me about 20 seconds to fill out this Google form for each student um, just so that um, our administrator who's in charge of the entire eSchool, they can see which students are red flagged for being seriously behind in their work. So their grade at the time that it's not, uh, it's not really, indicating who's behind it's just showing what their current grade is but that google form catches those kids that are um, falling behind and it does seem to work they said a lot of the students do have um, an iep and they have um, um, a special ed teacher who is assigned to them and then there's a lot of communication that goes on to get those kids um, caught up when they need to be um, and then the second question, does Loom allow you to add other video snippets into your video or is it only for recording? I would say um, it's, it's a one shot deal. You record, um, you do one recording and then I think if you have to, you would have to maybe have it in a different section. I have not tried that, that's a good question. It may be that you can add, Maybe you can put them all in a in a group, you know, like there's these three videos on this one topic. Um, yeah, because otherwise, hmm, I've not had to do that yet. So I'm not 100% sure how that would look. That's my best answer. So I'm looking if there's any other questions. Hmm. Okay, we got one here. 
Um, are some students blocked from signing up for eSchool and or blended classes if they had trouble with keeping up with work in the past? Um, right now, I have not seen students being blocked, um, but I have seen students um, like choose to not do it again because um, they've realized it wasn't for them. Um, we do work really hard um, to get those kids the help that they need um, if they've had trouble keeping up with the work. Um, so for example, there's a student who's a bit behind, but he does have an IEP. And so his, his teacher, his special ed teacher, um, every week kind of checks in with us. Well, you know, and he's found it easier if we if we chunk it down in a different way. So I have to spend a few minutes sometimes ex, um, explaining to his um, special ed teacher specifically what assignment I want him to do that week, even though it's, it looks very organized on here. Um, you know, that would be an example of how we've made accommodations for students who who struggle with this format. Um, another thing that is available to students is that we have a room, not at the high school, it's actually at one of the elementary schools. We have a workspace for eSchool. So eSchool actually has a classroom where students can come in and work and there's a person um, who sits in that room to help. So it's um, one of our, it's, um, uh, one of our teachers who's like a teacher on special assignment who works with the eSchool program and she basically has her office hours in that room and um, students can come in and work and if they get stuck on something there's a teacher there to help them and some students who fall behind um, th then it's they there's a lot of pressure on them to commit to coming into the workroom like once a week or twice a week you know can you come in for three hours on a monday morning and let's see how much stuff we can get done um, so that is something that has been really successful is um, having they're still working on e-school but they're they're doing it with someone besides their mother nagging them and um, that has worked out and they can get a lot of work done that way so hopefully that answered that question well all right we're getting close to eight o'clock. Any other questions? <laughs> All right, seems like we're pretty done. Um, thanks everybody. And it looks like Jill might be chiming on here as well. I hope um, I hope you guys learned a lot and I do want to throw out there that, oh, thank you. You're welcome. Um, that, um, you know, if you ever need to reach out or have any questions, please, please, please feel, feel free to do so. All right. Yes. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. We greatly appreciate that. And we do have a few more things to go over here before we, um, Say goodbye to everybody tonight. So first we want to share the registration link for our next webinar, which is NAEA School for Art Leaders with PAEA President-elect Leslie Grace. And that link is now added to the chat roll. Please feel free to copy the link. And second, please make sure that you have signed in on the chat roll to verify your participation in tonight's webinar. Please sign in with your first and last name. And remember, the registration links for all PAEA sponsored events are also available on the PAEA website calendar, the PAEA Facebook pages, and most likely through email from me, PAEA's Director of Programming, or your division or region reps. Remember to check your email for the Act 48 link coming soon. And that's a wrap. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Unless there's any other questions, <laughs> I'll give you about another minute to sign in, and then we will say good night. Looks good. Thank you again, Robin. Right. You bet. You're welcome. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. See ya.